Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Week four of the college football season is here. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be breaking down every single week four game for the top 25 teams, trying to predict the outcome for every game. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? What the final score will be? The money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you have any comments Drop them below, and I'll make sure to respond. Every week, we go over every single college football game, and we also do the same thing for every NFL game during the whole 2024 season. So make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that you can follow along with us. So week three is in the books. It was a crazy week, but the bye weeks are starting to happen now. Every now and then, there's going to be some of our top teams that are not going to be playing that Saturday but we have some really good games coming up for week four. And we're also starting to get closer to conference play. So a really a lot of competitive games, a lot of rivalry games are starting to kick off. Let's go ahead and get things started running through these games. The very first one we have is a Friday game, a top 25 on top 25 matchup. At 8 p.m. on Fox, we have the number 24 Illinois fighting Illini visiting number 22, the Nebraska Corn Huskers. Both teams are sitting at 3 0 right now. Nebraska is a favorite at home. They're nine point favorites here. This is going to be a really fun game. This is two really competitive defenses, physical teams. You have Matt Rule with Nebraska, you have Brett Balema on the other side with the Fighting Illini. Both guys like to line up, they like to beat you at the line of scrimmage. Expect a slower pace game, a lot of running, a lot of physical play. Who's going to outlast the other team? Which team is going to get tired by the second half? It's probably going to be a close game first half, but once you get into that third or fourth quarter, you'll start to see which physical team starts to pull away. But Nebraska has one thing that Illinois doesn't have. Dylan Riola, the true freshman, he's lighting it up right now. You're going to have three years of this guy. He's a true freshman. Matt Rule is building this team from the foundation up, but this is his first true test against a physical team. This will be the best defense that he's played the whole season. So there could potentially be some turnovers. So turnovers can be a massive point of this game. Nebraska is the favorite, but Illinois does not have a bad roster by any means. They have Altmeyer at quarterback closing in on 700 yards through the first three weeks. But this game's going to come down to the run game. Both teams run the ball really well. You have the fighting Illini. They average 153 yards per game. Nebraska, 171 yards per game. Nebraska has the better quarterback. They probably have the better defense, but both defenses giving under 10 points per game. I'm going to go with Nebraska to win this one at home. 27 to 17 cover that spread just barely but like I said turnovers could be a major factor in this game whoever turns the ball over the least amount of times they're going to win this game we're now moving on to our Saturday games kicking things off at 12 p.m on Fox we have one and one Marshall coming off the bye week versus number three Ohio State Buckeyes also coming off the bye week they are two and oh the Buckeyes have a 97 percent chance to win this game the Buckeyes, they've had an easy schedule so far throughout the season, but next week actually kicks off conference play. So look for the Buckeyes to want to roll into the conference games riding hot right now. They really want to make sure that they keep that offense rolling. Marshall, they do not have a bad team by any means. They're averaging 30 points a game, but we know who the Buckeyes are. They have the best defense in all of college football. They're only giving up three points per game. They have yet to give up a touchdown so far in this season, and it's week four. They have a loaded defense. They're bringing back eight starters from their number three total defense last season, and their offensive roster is loaded. Will Howard is starting to look like he's getting comfortable in Chip Kelly's scheme. You have Knowles, you have Ryan Day, and the skill position players. You have Henderson, you have Junkins, you have Egbuka, you have Jeremiah Smith, you have a much improved offensive line. This game should not be close in any way whatsoever. Starters will probably get pulled the third quarter, but that's a pretty big spread here. So they are 40-point favorites, the over-under 51.5. I'm going to go with the Buckeyes winning this one easily, though. 48-6, to still not giving up a touchdown and covering that spread. The next matchup we're looking at at ABC on at 12 p.m., we have 2-1 and one NC State visiting number 21 Clemson Tigers coming off the bye week. They're 1-1. One one. Clemson has a 88.5% chance to win this game for NC State. 
This team right now, they're sitting at 2-1. and one. They've been a little of a letdown so far this season, but still a very solid team. Grayson McCall, who was the transfer quarterback, he got hurt this past weekend. As of right now, they're going to be rolling with Bailey starting this game. So you're going to have a true freshman who, yes, he came in, played well in Week 3, won in the game. But we're talking about Clemson here. A top 10, very physical defense. They're going to have so many different looks. They're going to be blitzing this guy nonstop, try to shut him down, force him to have to beat them vertically through the air. That's a lot to ask from Bailey right now. So that definitely massively favors Clemson in this game. They are 20 and a half point favorites. The over under is 50 and a half. But what NC State does have is they actually have a pretty decent defense. Yes, they're giving up 30.7 points a game, but that's pretty uh, kind of thrown off whack because they had that game versus Tennessee. And Tennessee's putting 70 points up on everybody so far this season so those numbers are kind of skewed right now they will come down throughout the season probably will finish around 19 to 20 but that defense is going to be physical Cade Klubnik was beat up for Clemson Clemson's playing a lot better under Dabo they had the bye week they had a lot of things they had to work on on the offensive side have they gotten better under Riley how comfortable will Kate Klubnik be? How comfortable will Maffa be? Dabo, he should have reason by now that he needs to start using the transfer portal, but that's probably not going to happen. He is always going to be rolling with the guys that he recruits. This is the number eight overall roster according to ESPN. It's just the offense has to start playing like it. They have to start averaging about 38 to 41 points per game to actually have a chance to make it through the playoffs. But they're much alive in the ACC still. Yes, they lost to Georgia. They have no conference losses. They're kicking things off here with NC State. It's probably going to come down to them or Miami in the ACC. You want to make sure that that you get there. If you win the ACC, you get in the playoffs. That's all that matters. I have Clemson winning this one 32 to 13, winning it handedly, but not covering the spread. The next matchup we're looking at at 2 p.m. on ESPN Plus, we have two and one Arkansas State visiting number 20 Iowa State. Arkansas State just lost to Michigan, but they actually played Michigan really competitively. It got down to a very close two possession game. They lost it, but they showed that they might be able to compete with the physicality of these power four conferences. And then you have Iowa State. They have the massive win versus Iowa. That that was a huge win. That's a very physical game versus a top 15 defense. They showed they can score some points when they need to score them. They're coming off the bye week. They should be well rested here. But Iowa State, they need to score more points. They're only averaging 20.5 points a game, but they have a really physical defense. They're only giving up 11 points a game. There will be opportunities to be able to score here versus Arkansas State. This is a massive spread, though. They are 21 and a half point favorites. They have an 82.7% chance to win this game. The over under is 51 and a half. It's probably going to come down to some turnovers here. Iowa State physical defense. They're going to try to force some mistakes from Raynor. Iowa State has Becked at quarterback, closing in on 600 yards, four touchdowns, one picks. I'm going to roll with Iowa State to get the win here. 33 to 13 but not cover that spread I just need to see more from this offense to think that they'll be able to score that much going forward the next game we're looking at on the Big Ten Network at 3 30 p.m we have O and 3 Kent State visiting number 10 Penn State sitting at 2 and O. Penn State a 99 percent chance to win this game 49 point favorites I hate these massive spreads they're so hard to pick but they are a heavy favorite here. The over-under is 55 and a half. When you look at the stats here for the team, Kent State, they're having a lot of issues scoring points. They're only averaging 13.7 points a game. They're giving up 49.7 points per game. But obviously, they just played Tennessee in week three, and they gave up 70-something points. They got curb stomped. But they do have an awful defense either way. Uh, but I, I think them giving up 70-something points kind of blew these Vegas numbers a little out of the water because it's like they think Penn State is going to have the same success for them, which I think they're going to have easy success moving the ball. But Penn State also knows that they're getting into conference play starting next week versus Illinois, who is a ranked team. So once you get a massive lead here, pull your starters out third, fourth quarter, rest them because you're getting into physical Big Ten conference play a very deep Big Ten conference. So you don't want to leave them in there the fourth quarter trying to run up points. But Penn State's very talented. Yes, they gave up a lot of points to Bowling Green. 
That was an abomination in week two. They've had a bye week to rest on that, get the defense right. This is a team that had a top 10 defense last year. They have their coordinator, Allen. They're going to have a top 10 defense this year once all is said and done. James Franklin's going to get these guys back on track. You have Drew Aller. You have a very deep running back room, Singleton, Allen. They're going to be way too physical. They're averaging 230 yards per game on the ground. They're going to run it down their throat. I have them winning this one 52-9, but not covering that spread. Like I said, that's a pretty massive spread. The next game is the game of the weekend to me on CBS at 3.30 p.m. Number 11, USC Trojans sitting at 2-0. They're looking to get their second top 25 win, which would be the most in all of college football. They're on the road here in the big house playing number 18, Michigan, at 2-1. Michigan is the defending national champs. Obviously, Harbaugh's gone. Sharon Moore is the head coach. The Trojans on the road here, 57.7% chance to win this game. But the big house is always a tough place to play. Just because Texas came in there and walloped Michigan doesn't mean that anyone can just come in there and beat them in the big house. But Michigan has massively been struggling this season. Their offense is horrible. They need to get with modern college football times. They only have one starter back on offense from their national championship team. Yes, they're going to have a top 20 defense. Very physical defense. But the defense can only hold these teams at bay for so long when their offense refuses to get a first down. They've been rotating in quarterbacks. You had Warren. You had Orgy. They both haven't played well. Orgy, I mean, uh, Orgy. Warren, though, has like five or six picks so far in only three games. He's not played well at all. He's no longer the starting quarterback as of this game. Moore has said they're going to roll with Orgy to start the game first time this season. So we'll kind of see how, how that works. But USC has been playing really well. They've beaten LSU. They've shut out Utah State. Very talented team. You have Miller Moss, who's lighting it up. You have a good offensive line. Running backs, a very talented wide receiver core. You have the best offensive mind in all of college football in Lincoln Riley. He loves these moments. They're going to throw it. They're going to run it. They're going to get physical. But what about that defense? That defense that was awful last season. Danton Lynn has been hired, has completely revamped the defense. Their last game, they shut out Utah State. Lincoln Riley never shuts anyone out. Every game is always a shootout. So we see the improvements on defense. This is a legitimate team that can compete in the Big Ten right now, but this game is going to be physical. So Michigan might be able to punch you in the mouth, and we have to see how the Trojans respond. I have USC going on the road, winning this one 30-17, covering the spread and just barely going with the over. The next game we're looking at on NBC at 3.30 p.m., we have the 0-2 Miami of Ohio versus number 17, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish sitting at 2-1. Notre Dame has a 96.9% chance to win this game. Pretty big favorites here, 27.5 point favorites. The over-under is 43.5. Obviously, Miami hasn't won any games so far this season. They're, they are 0-2, and, and just look at their offense. They're averaging 11 points a game. They're giving up 20 points per game. They have a pretty decent passing game. They're going to look to try to throw the ball on Notre Dame. The biggest question is, Notre Dame has a top 10 defense. Will you even have time to be able to throw the ball? And Miami's defense, they give up 185 yards passing, 183 yards rushing. That's what really stands out to me. 183 yards. Look for Notre Dame to just line up get physical, run the ball with love, and just run it down your throat for four straight quarters. Riley's going to run it. Notre Dame lost to Mac NIU. So pretty much they need to win out. I said in my Notre Dame predictions video preseason, they can only afford to go 11-1. and There's no conference championship. If they lose two games because they don't have that 13th conference championship game, they don't get to impress that last week. They'll get left out at 10-2. and two. Notre Dame has to go 11-1. and one. They have some big games on the schedule still. They have to win out to make up for losing at home to NIU. Look for them to roll here. They're going to run it. They're going to throw it. They're going to get physical. They have a lot of injuries on the line, but the talent gap here is too far. They're going to win this one 48-20 and cover that spread. The next game we're looking at on ESPN2 at 3.30, 3-1 Georgia Tech. They have their fifth game coming up. It's week four. They'll be visiting number 19 Louisville Cardinals coming off the bye. They're 2-0. 
Louisville, a heavy favorite here. 78.3% chance to win this game. They're 10-point favorites. The over-under is 57.5. I was pretty split on this game because I don't think there's a 78.3% chance that Louisville wins. I think it's 50-50. I think this game could easily go either way. Georgia Tech, they're a pretty well-balanced team. You have King at the quarterback position. He could throw it, but he does have a lot of turnovers. But he's a very mobile quarterback, had just under 1,000 yards rushing last season. Georgia Tech led the ACC in rushing yards last year. You had King running the ball, and you have Haynes at running back, the leading ACC rusher last season. This is a very talented team. They're going to test Louisville, but Louisville is a very well-balanced team. Tyler Shaw having a really good game at the quarterback position. They're very balanced. They're throwing for 340 yards a game. They're running for almost 270 yards per game. That's a very balanced, successful offense. They're only giving up seven points a game. They're going to definitely be stacked on defense. Brom has really worked the portal. This team is deep. They lost a lot of starters from last season, but they did replace them successfully. But I'm going to go with the upset here. There has to be an upset game somewhere. For some reason, like I said, I'm 50-50 on this game. If Louisville wins, I would in no way be surprised. They are the favorites. They are very balanced. But I'm going to go with Georgia Tech stealing this one, winning this one in a very close shootout, 32-30. to so obviously, that spread not getting covered. Georgia Tech, very talented. But it, but if they lost this game, I also would not be surprised. Very, very even game. Our next game on ESPN Plus at 3.30 p.m., 2 and 1 Buffalo. They'll be visiting number 23 NIU at 2-0. and They're coming off the bye. NIU a 78.3% chance to win this game. They are 14-point favorites. The over-under is 43.5. So NIU... They were ranked after they beat Notre Dame. Props to them. They're, they are coming out of the MAC. They have one massive fan right now, Notre Dame. Notre Dame is rooting for NIU to do as well as they possibly can, win as many games as possible because that's Notre Dame's loss. They want that loss to look as good as possible. It's not a good loss by any means, but if they win the MAC, you can kind of brush off the loss a little more to where if they finish 5-7. and seven. So Notre Dame's definitely pulling for them. If you're an Irish fan, pull for them. You want them to look really good. You want them to basically win the MAC and be the representative from the MAC in the playoffs. Will that happen? I don't know, but definitely pull for them. This is a very talented team, so they're averaging 35 points a game. Very good defense, giving up 14.5 points a game. They out physical Notre Dame at Notre Dame on both lines of scrimmage on the offensive line, on the defensive line. Yes, they were worked up for that game. Can they continue to come off that high coming off the bye? That's going to test them. Can they run with that throughout the whole season? I have NIU winning this one 30-18, but not covering the spread. The next matchup, we have a Big Ten on SEC matchup on ABC at 340. We have 1-1 one and one UCLA Bruins visiting number 16 LSU at 2-1, and one, coming off of that game versus the South Carolina Gamecocks. Very physical game, went down to the wire. They had to come back. They were 17 down. They won the game. Props for them. They showed a lot of heart fighting on the road coming back, so that's definitely one thing that Brian Kelly should be happy about. But their defense in this, since they played USC has really taken a step back. Nichols scored way too many points on them. South Carolina scored way too many points on them and had some more scores that were actually called back due to flags. So that might be a red flag there. This cannot be the LSU team from last season where every game's a shootout and they win or lose 42-35. That's not a successful concept in the SEC in 2024. For UCLA, obviously Chip Kelly's gone. This team has taken some massive steps back. Garber, he's not having a good season at the quarterback position. They're averaging 14.5 points a game. They're giving up 27.5 points a game, but their defense has been on the field the whole game. LSU. They have a top 10 roster. They lost their running back, but their running game has gotten really good. They ran the ball successfully versus South Carolina. They, they have Nussmeyer at quarterback. They have Blake Baker on the defensive side. But like I said, they got to get the defense right. They've been giving up way too many points the last two weeks. Brian Kelly, focus on that defense. What better team to get things right than the Bruins, who are averaging under 15 points a game. So you can definitely pad those stats here. I have LSU winning this one. They are 24.5 point favorites over under 55.5. I have them winning it 42 to 17 and covering the spread. 
Our next game is going to be a really fun Big 12 game. The Big 12 has some really talented teams sitting at 12, 13, and 14 in the top 25. We get to see on Fox at 4 p.m. number 12, Utah 3-0, visiting number 14, Oklahoma State 3-0. Whoever wins this game is probably going to catapult themselves into the top 10 and in the front running for that Big 12 playoff position. Big 12 rights for top team in the Big 12 is basically up for grabs this weekend. You have the Cowboys. They have a 60.2% chance to win this game. So the Utes are the Vegas favorites, but the public's going with the Cowboys. Utah's favored by two points, the over-under 51.5. When you look at Utah, you have Kyle Winningham, one of the most underappreciated head coaches in the country, the second longest tenured head coach in the country at one school. Very successful coach. They're going to have a top 20 defense. They're only giving up 11 points per game. And that's with Cam Rising not playing for almost the last two games. Cam Rising was out, but Isaac Wilson, freshman, stepped in. He didn't look good in week two, but he looked really good in week three because they had a full week to prepare for him as the starter. They were able to throw the ball push the ball down the field. We know the defense is going to be physical every week. You're going to get the same product every week. Successful, physical, disciplined defense. And they had a successful run game. Bernard, Mitchell, they were running the ball downhill. Wilson looked great. But Cam Rising's back. He's supposed to be starting on Saturday. When he plays, this offense goes to another level. I have Utah winning this one. But Oklahoma State... They're no chumps. Very good team. Bowman having a really good year throwing the ball. They're averaging 42.7 points per game. But their secret weapon is really not a secret, but he just hasn't done too much this season. Ollie Gordon, the Doak Award winner from last season, had 1,700 yards, 21 total touchdowns. They have weapons at the wide receiver position because they work the portal hard. Mike Gundy's the third longest tenured coach. The second most underappreciated head coach in the country next to Kyle Winningham. These guys are both great coaches. They both win 10 games every season. This game could go either way. That's why Vegas picked one. The public picked the other. I'm going to go with Utah winning this one 33-20, to 20, covering the spread. I would not be surprised if Oklahoma State wins it. Ollie Gord is the secret weapon, especially on third downs. If he has a successful game, which he hasn't really had yet this season, they could easily take this game. But I'm going to go with the Utes taking it. Our next game is an SEC matchup on the SEC Network at 4.15 p.m. 2-1 and one Vanderbilt versus 3-0 Missouri Tigers. They're sitting at number 7. Missouri has an 88.4% chance to win this game. They are 20.5-point favorites. The over-under is 52.5. Vanderbilt's been kind of up and down this season. They did start out the year with a win versus Virginia Tech, and then you really haven't heard anything from them. They're playing Missouri at Missouri. Missouri's coming off of that win versus Boston College. Very physical game. They were down 14 nothing. They fought their way back. They won, but they showed weaknesses. They hadn't given up a touchdown yet up till week three, but Boston College was able to move the ball with Thomas Castellanos. Bill Bill O'Brien was, was the head coach. Missouri has a very easy schedule this season. They can basically sleepwalk to a 10-2 and season and potentially a shot to compete in the SEC championship and a shot to make the playoffs, no doubt. They're averaging 38.7 points a game. They're giving up 7 points a game. They have Burden. They have Cook. Talented team, weapons on offense and defense. I do have question marks about their depth and their defense, though, because they've had a pretty easy schedule so far. But Vanderbilt shouldn't challenge them. So I have Missouri winning this one 34-16, but not covering the spread. The next matchup to me is going to be a really fun one. On ESPN at 7 p.m., we have number 8 Miami 3-0. They're on the road versus USF 2-1 Miami with a 85.2% chance to win this game. They're 16.5 point favorites. The over-under, a massive 65.5. Vegas has a lot of points being scored here. When you look at these two teams, you definitely see why. So Miami's averaging 53 points a game, USF 37.7, and that's with a game versus Alabama. And then you have Miami giving up 8.7 points per game, USF 23 points per game. USF showed how competitive they can be. They played Alabama 14-13 in the fourth quarter before Bama blew the doors off. But they got really competitive that, that game. They played physical. They showed that they could run the ball. 
Miami. They're going to have a top 20 offense once this season ends. They're going to have a top 20 defense. They Well, they're probably going to have a top 10 offense and a top 20 defense. Very talented team. You have Cameron Ward, who's on a Heisman run right now. You have Damian Martinez. You have Mark Fletcher at running back. Wide receiver core is deep. You have Restrepo. You have Brown. You have Horton. George. You have Arroyo at tight end. And Williams loaded a top 10 offensive line. They've only given up one sack this season. They had a top 10 line last season. They have a top 10 deep line this season. They have a very loaded defensive line, a top 10 defensive line in all of college football. That's going to make the difference here. But this is an under-the-radar upset alert game because USF's really talented. Miami hasn't had a really successful season in a few years. So how is Miami going to adapt on the road versus a under-the-radar competitive team? That's the challenge here. Can Mario Cristobal keep his coaching staff organized on these games that they should be winning, that they are heavy favorites on? I think they will have no problem. It's just you have to be watchful here because this is going to challenge the coach to make sure he keeps his team disciplined. They don't start getting flagged thinking for the first time that they've had success that they can just steamroll these teams and not take these games serious because you see how that came and bit Notre Dame. Once they got success, they took NIU for granted and they lost at home. Miami's on the road here. I think they're going to win. I have them winning it. 47 to 20 and covering the spread. The next one's a ranked on ranked matchup on ABC. Number six, Tennessee Volunteers, 3 0, 730, visiting Oklahoma. Number 15, Oklahoma, sitting at 3 0. Tennessee, 71% chance to win this game. Seven point favorites, a pretty close spread considering how many points they score. The over under is 57 and a half. This game's going to be fun. This is one of our other. Top 25 on top 25 matchups. Welcome to the SEC Oklahoma. This is their first SEC matchup this season. It's going to be a fun one. Tennessee, they're scoring an ungodly amount of points this season. You have Josh Heupel, one of the best offensive minds in all of college football. You have Nico at quarterback lighting things up. You have Squirrel White. You have Dylan Sampson. Tennessee's talented. They can beat you passing the ball. They can beat you running the ball. They can beat you on defense. They might be the best balanced offensive and defensive team in the nation right now. They are on track right now to compete for the SEC, to compete for the playoffs, to compete potentially for the national championship. If you were not taking them serious, definitely start taking them serious now. They have uh, they average 63.7 points a game. They give up four Point three points a game. That's video game numbers. Oklahoma, they've been struggling on offense the last two weeks. They've been winning, but they've been struggling. They have not been able to get push on the offensive line. Jackson Arnold has not played his best. This is his first season as the full-time starter. He will be getting better. They do have a new offense, but they've been struggling. They are coming into this game struggling. Tennessee's coming into this game flying hot running the score up on people. They're going to be aggressive out the gate, throwing bombs on the Sooners. How will Oklahoma respond if they quickly find themselves down 14 to nothing at home? That's the question. But Brett Venables has a very deep team, the number 11 total roster according to ESPN, and they have a very talented defense. They're only giving up 11 points per game. So that defense might be able to keep things at bay for some time, but they're going to have to score some points. I have Tennessee winning this one 34 223 and covering that spread and just potentially like USC being one of the only teams with two top 25 wins by week four. The next game on the SEC network at 730 we have one and one Bowling Green who played Penn State really close in week two. They will be visiting number 25. Welcome back to the top 25, the two and one Texas A&M Aggies, their lone loss to Notre Dame. The Aggies have a 90.6% chance to win this game. They are 23 point favorites here. That's a massive spread. The over under 52 and a half. Bowling Green showed they can move the ball versus a top 10 defense. They played Penn State really close at home. They're not going to shrink back from this game. They went on the road and went blow for blow with Penn State. They can technically do the same versus the Aggies, but the Aggies are feeling pretty good right now. They are coming off of a beatdown of the Florida Gators in Gainesville. Mike Elko, first year with this team. Very talented coaching staff. They have a top 10 roster according to ESPN. They lost Wegman. Reed stepped in at quarterback, and he went off 
running the ball, throwing the ball, showed just how deep this roster is. They're going to line up. They're going to get physical with Bowling Green. They have Moss. They have Daniels. They're going to run the ball downhill. They have a really talented defense. I have the Aggies winning this one 38-20, but not covering the spread. The next matchup on the SEC Network at 7.45 p.m., 2-1 Georgia Southern versus number 5 Old Miss Rebels at 3-0. Oh, Old Miss, a 97.1% chance to win this game, the over-under 65.5. Just like Tennessee, Old Miss has been scoring a lot of points, but Georgia Southern is not a chump. They can score a lot of points. Both of these head coaches, Clay Helton, Lane Kiffin, are both past USC head coaches. It's kind of an interesting fact here. Both guys like to score. Both guys run very talented offenses. But for Old Miss, there's a massive talent gap here. You have, you have Jackson Dart at the quarterback position having a Heisman-type season so far. Old Miss put all their chips in for the 2024 season. They're making a run at the SEC, at the playoffs, at the national championship. They are loaded on both sides of the ball. They should be able to outlast Georgia Southern second half. Georgia Southern will probably get some garbage points, but I have Old Miss winning this one 52 to 20, a lopsided win, but not covering that spread. Then on the SEC network at 8 p.m., we have a late one. We have ULM at 2 0, visiting number one Texas Longhorns, 3 0, the new number one team as of week four. Texas, a 99% chance to win this game, the over under 52 and a half. ULM, they can score some points, they have a solid defense. But there's a massive talent gap here. But Texas knows you have SEC play coming up on the horizon. Once you get a big lead in this game, pull your starters early. Let the second, third string get some reps. There's no need to score 70 here. Keep your team healthy for SEC play. You're already down Quinn Ewers. Heisman level, first round quarterback. He got hurt last week. Archie Manning stepped in, and this team just continued to roll. He had a great game. He showed what all the Manning hype was about. It wasn't just his last name. He's going to light it up first half, get him out of the game, late late third quarter, get the backups in. Texas will have no problem. They have a top five overall roster. They're averaging 46.3 points a game. They're giving up 6.3 points per game. I have them winning this one 52-10. to 10. But not covering that that massive spread. Could this game be a shutout? Yes. I don't think it, it will be. But Texas is going to win it handedly easily. Then our last game on ESPN at 10.30 p.m. Number 13, Kansas State 3-0. Visiting 3-0 BYU. Cougars having a really good, solid season by week four. You have the, the uh, Kansas State Wildcats on the road. 70% chance to win this game. They're seven-point favorites here. The over-under is 47.5. This game kind of also has an under-the-radar upset alert game. Kansas State's coming in here. They're rolling pretty hot right now, coming off of a massive beatdown versus Arizona. But this is Big 12 play. They're flying up to the mountains this game. BYU's under-the-radar competitive. They're averaging 31 points a game only giving up 14 points a game. Kansas State, though, they're averaging 35.3 points a game. They're giving up 13.3 points a game. This game is evenly matched here, but Kansas State has Avery Johnson at the quarterback position, the highest recruited quarterback in Kansas State history. He showed versus Arizona what the hype was about. The guy can throw it, but man, is he mobile. He can run it up and down the field. Look for that mobility to be a massive factor here. I have this game being really close up to the late third, fourth quarter, Kansas State winning this one 32-21 to and covering the spread. So that's a breakdown of our week four predictions for the 2024 college football season. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any comments on any of these games or any other ones, drop them below and I will make sure to respond. Thank you.